Yeah. I'm going through changes. Yeah. Doesn't mean that I've changed. Oh, guys. Um, just shooting some content for those that did get to join us. Um, we, uh, we just recorded a live guided prayer. Uh, Chelsea and I did. It was so great. Um, like I say that, you know, like it was so great. I just got them preaching a sermon, guys. It was really good. Uh, no, we're going to go live tonight, though, for church. For everyone who needs church, wants church, part of church home, join us 8 p.m. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Thanks, David. David and I are just hanging. 8 p.m. on the dot. But thanks for watching. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Dum, dum. Dum, 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 dum. No, no. No, no, no. Oh, someone just said, uh, how's your soul? What's up, Pastor? Love your book, How's Your Soul? Thank you. Man, well, that means the world. Oh, a guy started life is five minutes ago. Guys, it says right now. I just don't know if this is true, but we're going to wait for him. Wait. No way. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's Stephen Furtick. This is real. Hey. Bro, you made my day. Really? I'm not even joking. That emotion was so authentic and legitimate. First of all, I miss you. I hate quarantine my personality type is not doing ideal but i feel like here's my question i feel like stephen furtick thrives under quarantine yeah holly said this is basically how i've been living for three years i knew it i feel like i know you you do <laughs> okay tell us like why does quarantine just fit with you why does it fit with you I do the same stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, you heard it here first on Hold the Phone. Stephen Furtick, why does the quarantine fit you? I do the same stuff. It's called H Hold the Phone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I named my show Hold the Phone with Judah and Friends. I also haven't liked hugging people for five to seven years. Like, like you love that. You love not hugging. I've been looking for a way out of hugging for quite a while. <laughs> Bro, the first thing I'm going to do when I see you in, in person, I'm going to hug you and hold on. That's one of my favorite things to do is, is the hug and the hold. And I'll enjoy it. And you I promise? It. Are you yeah, just saying I'll that because we're on Instagram I'll Live? No, I'll enjoy it. I'm telling you things. I mean, I think I've been pretty open so far on hold the phone. I think, <laughs> I think I've been pretty candid. Hey, do you want to do you want to do a uh, do you want to do like a like a live shared sermon for a few minutes? Yes, you do. Sure. OK, do you want me to choose the text? Yes. OK, so Psalm 61 says that God will hide us under the shadow of his wings. It's there that we'll find refuge. Psalm 61 verses one, two, three and four. <clears throat> we just had a guided prayer around him. So. I'm going to I'm going to start and then and then you can jump in and then I'll jump in and then you can jump in and get my bible. I'll be right back. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, I got to get my bible. Good. Oh, I got it right here. Yes. Yeah, so we've set up studios like in the house just so we can keep preaching. Have you done that? Same. Same. Yeah. Yeah, we got this, like, this whole like lighting kit. Like it's it looks way cooler. I feel like I'm at like Hillsong conference. It does look good behind you. It's really good. Does pretty. it? Yeah. yeah that's that's great. a lot. Uh-oh. Oh, no. No, no, you're good. You're good. I don't think people realize how much I admire you. Thank you, man. No, and I'm being dead serious. I admire well, you so much. Your I feel that way picture. about you. I mean, how many Saturdays you're, do I just text you that your voice is preaching to me? It's kind of a go-to. Like, I'll find your sermon from Wednesday, and I'll listen to it Saturday <laughs> and start texting you. I mean, I think you're literally one of the most gifted communicators alive today. And I think you're the best of a generation. It's an honor to be your friend, man. Well, it's an honor to be your friend. And I, to, to what I'm about to say is going to sound like um, I'm just, I'm just saying it, but like, I'm not. Chelsea will tell you that I oftentimes find myself, okay, 
if Steven was in this moment making this decision, like, what would he think about? Who would he talk to? What would be the questions? Because, bro, anytime we've had a combo, we're not even talking about preaching because you're, it's ridiculous, but your decision making, your perspective, how you curate data uh, to like make a decision or expand or, or even like, bro, your message when you start talking about how God uses distance. I saw a clip of that and I'm like, I just, anyways, I love, I love how you think. I love how you process. It means a lot. And I, I want to be more intentional and purposeful. So that's why it, it speaks to me big time. So well, we love the same things, like the little we things do. in the text that just make us come alive. I was reading about the Israelites crossing the Jordan. And when it came to the phrase that, you know, they had to keep a distance from the ark. And I'm like, huh, you know, the presence of God is close. So why a distance? And then I saw that the water stood at a distance when they crossed through. I said, huh. So God uses distance, you know, for, for good and to draw us into deeper faith. And I think we both live for those moments. Like at our heart, we're preachers. We, we have to lead and, and all of that. But when it comes down to what we love, it's just when the word of God comes alive. That's, I think, why we immediately had a connection with each other because we love the same thing. We love those moments. Where, where it just, you know, where it becomes new again to us. I, I don't know if I heard it from you. I don't know if I heard it from Bishop Jakes. But, but like at some point, I, I assimilated a concept that was like, when you go to the narrative, when you go to the Bible story, like, like not only look for Jesus, but look for something you've never seen before and let Jesus show you that. And then it's like, people are like, how do you write sermons? And I'm like, bro, it's exactly what you just said. Like, I see something I've never seen before. And I'm like, whoa, and then I get intrigued. And then I get genuinely curious. And I'm like, I got to find out why that's there. Or yeah. today, like I'm thinking about Luke chapter 24. And I just read it um, just just this morning, just out of curiosity. And it said that like Jesus, you know, levitates into the clouds after he does some stuff. And he says some amazing things. And then it says and they all went back to Jerusalem. And they have this like, deep seated rooted joy like it's looking at the original language i think different message ever they all try to like say they were just so pumped like they got back to jerusalem so pumped and i'm like wait a minute jesus just left them and yet they go home not discouraged not distraught joy. speaking of distance but they go home to jerusalem like oh let's go and i'm like whoa wait a minute like i don't know like i want to go home from church like that or i want to go home from like or, or we're all home. What am I talking about? But but it just got me thinking, I want that emotion. How do I get that joy? How do I get that emotion? Like, Jesus, show me in this passage why these first first Christians went home so pumped. Like, because mm -hmm. I, I want the same in my life. And um, I do love that. I love when he starts talking about, like, what you see in Scripture, because it just it gets me going. How would, you, how would you then bear that out? So they were filled with joy when Jesus left them in physical form, would you take that insight to the point of saying that sometimes when God takes something away from our lives, you know, the idea that the Holy Spirit was coming, mm. and so it was the fact that something greater was filling them, that when anything leaves our life, God won't leave us without what we need, that when something is taken from our life, we can expect God to give us what we need for the next season, or that he's going to do something even greater? Is that where you take that? Yeah, that's where I want to take it. I will say the difference between me and you, first of all, I sh we should do this more because um, my sermon just got gooder for tonight because I go live at 8 p.m. Uh, oh, Wednesday night. Yeah, because you have Wednesday I, night. You always have Wednesday night. Yeah, we always have Wednesday night. But yeah, immediately where my mind went was to the words of Jesus where he's like, hey, it's it's better that I leave. And you're like, better that you leave how is it anything better if jesus leaves because he's like i'm going to give you my spirit and so yeah i definitely want to try to flesh that out for tonight like i just don't know if we realize how significant the spirit of jesus is the holy spirit the spirit upon us and within us you can't say jesus christ is lord without the indwelling the effects the sense of him on you in you around you like these first christians just this stuff was just more real than their next meal and the oxygen they breathe. And I just, I crave that. I literally crave that in my own Western world. Yeah. So I would call it what's next is better. What would you call it? 
Well, I was just going to call it joy over faith. Oh, no, joy over fear. Joy over, <laughs> joy over fear. faith. I was just going to oh, be that's like, great. I, I love joy over fear. That's great. Joy over fear. You know, like we're all facing fear. But what if there's like a motion that's greater than fear that's like seated in like these ancient realities of the fulfillment of Jesus, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, leaving his spirit. And so now we can have, oh, we all are facing fear. But I wonder if there's a joy that's just greater. It's just greater. You know, everyone's like, don't be afraid. I'm like, well, I think fear's going to touch us all, but maybe something more significant, more powerful, more potent I will you. touch us all too, you know? Not the elimination of fear, but something stronger, something deeper that enables us to... I, I was preaching this week. What do you think about this? Because it's kind of unpopular to say that fear can be a gift. And what I meant by it was that although we have these scriptures, God has not given us a spirit of fear and, you know, perfect love cast out fear. And the Bible says 365 times, do not fear. Uh, one for every day of the week. That's right. My thought was that fear is to our faith what muscles and weights, like the relationship between fear and faith is the relationship of weights and muscles. And the feeling of fear gives our faith something to push against and to work through mm. and actually gain definition, gain strength, become more robust. And I think the feeling of fear is different than the spirit of fear, don't you? Because it gives us that impulse and then that opportunity to trust God. That's how our faith grows. What do you think about that? Oh, my word. I love that definition. The feeling of fear is different than the spirit of fear. You look up the word spirit there, obviously, in, in, uh, in what Paul is saying to Timothy, that that spirit of fear is like a it's like a mentality it's almost like a world view that like your view your attitude your disposition your perspective is like worry fear what might happen oh no where like the feeling of fear is like i'll experience that multiple times today you know like your 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 kid walks outside and you're like well buddy come on just stay away from the neighbors or, or whatever you know that we're all just thinking through this so i, I couldn't agree more and my favorite definition of faith is divine persuasion. I think we need to give God a lot more credit when it comes to our faith. And I think God is so famous for persuading people, just persuading. And so my favorite prayer right now when facing fear is like, is like God persuade me again. Like in the face of feeling fear, persuade me again. Show me how big you are again by your spirit. Like show me something in scripture that's like, whoa, you're so big and you're so magnanimous and you're so incredible. And, and it's like fear just, just kind of goes back to where it should be. It's like, oh yeah, this is real. Like coronavirus, my kids, my family, my mom, my, you know, yeah. But man, God, you know, so yeah, I don't know. I get, I, I get pretty emotional about it. It gets me excited. It's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> you're beautiful. <laughs> I could do this all day. Where's the fam? Are they just in the house? Mingling? Yeah, they had the first day of online school today. Whoa. And that was, um, you know, mixed results. <laughs> <laughs> Said every dad everywhere. <laughs> what an opportunity. <laughs> okay, here we go. Talk about faith. This takes a lot of faith. Yeah. Hey, um, are you and Holly still doing date night? This is a question. I had a buddy who told me him and his wife went downstairs in their basement and had their 10 year old um, be like a server at a restaurant and their 10 year old came down and like served them food and stuff and they went on a date. Wow. We haven't done that. <laughs> Neither have we. <laughs> we haven't done that at all. Uh, be honest. How many preachers have you watched during the quarantine? Or have you watched any preachers at all? I've watched a little less because I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to preach. I mean, we <laughs> built a studio in the basement. We put a studio upstairs. We have, we have been nonstop trying to figure out how to put more content out for people right now. How about you? Okay, exactly. And, and this is a great question. Our, uh, our creative team, we met yesterday and we're still trying to catch up and like, and like build, build a creative team. But, um, they're like, hey, pastor, I was like, someone just tell me the truth. Like, how long do I preach? What's like a good time? Because Craig Rochelle says under 30 minutes. Uh, Steven's like, you know, 40 to 45, uh, you know, Rich and Carl and Chad and John and Bishop Jakes can preach all day and we'll watch. So like, and 
she goes, uh, her name's Bree. Bree goes, your average listener stays for 14 minutes and 58 seconds faster. And I was like, oh man, that's not even my, in my intro's not even done at that point. I'm not even done with my story. So what we're learning, Pastor Steven, is that uh, people who watch my sermons, they stay for the three quarters of my dumb story at the beginning. And then they're like, that was good. We're out. <laughs> your stories are the best though. I mean, I tell people, to learn how to connect uh, biblical truth to a personal story, listen to Judah. That's it. I mean, just your ability to find a story that seems pointless until it isn't, you know? <laughs> and it almost feels like sometimes um, when I'm listening to you tell a story um, about your kids or about golf or whatever like that, it almost feels like you find the emotional core of whatever you want to speak to people about through forcing yourself to start personal. And some people say, you shouldn't talk about yourself in the sermon, talk about Jesus. But I think that's the way that you, just as I've observed you, have kept your messages so grounded in reality because you force yourself to come from a personal space so it's not abstract mm -hmm. or ethereal. Is that, mm -hmm. is that right? Is that intentional? Well, yeah, I think without even knowing it, I don't know where I learned this. It's, it's, it's not a character quality as much as it's a personality trait. I, and it could be just because I think about myself a lot, but I, I go to a passage and then I go, oh, man, I really need that. Or, ooh, that's kind of like when I went off on my two boys. Ooh, I should. And then, like, I can't remember the last time I was like, ooh, what story should I tell? Sometimes my own life story comes to me first. And I'm like, oh, man. Uh, and my, because my dad taught me, like, don't be the starving baker. You know, you're fixing bread for everybody, but you never eat it yourself. Um, and so I'm constantly like, ooh, ooh, that I need that for my marriage or for my kids. And so it's kind of maybe an authentic or natural overflow when I go to sermonize or preach. It's like, well, I'll just start with that stupid story. And I love the element of surprise. I must admit, like, I love when the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air opens and you're like, why are we watching him, you know, make a sandwich in the kitchen, you know, and what's Will about to do? And I just love, like, you just read a portion of scripture and now you're telling us a story about a haircut you got. How in the world could this ever connect? And I, I get a thrill out of kind of connecting them a little bit. Um, I like that element of surprise and storytelling. It, 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 it moves me, I guess. Yeah, man, you do it beautifully. <laughs> um, I had an experience this weekend. I was preaching to a room that was almost empty. And, you know, it's cameramen and, and, <laughs> and camera women and Holly and a few musicians. And, but it was the normal auditorium. And I preached longer. I preached about an hour 10. You did? And this is great news. I preached longer. And I was trying to figure out why I preached longer when nobody was there. And I realized that when I started preaching, it was to five people. And so being back in that room, which is bigger now, and having cameras to connect with people, but really not having facial expressions to go off of, it forced me to only preach from within. And without that instant feedback of, yeah. was that funny? Was that good? Uh, did it make sense? It forced me deeper. And it was interesting because I thought it would be harder to preach in an empty room. And it was in the sense that you don't have that real time indication of whether it's sinking in or should I stay on that a little longer? Did they get it? And you don't have that constant reminder because we're really only preaching to one person, no matter how many people are in the room. Yeah. But something about having the people subtracted out of the room, I kind of liked feeling like I was back in Calpin, South Carolina, at a lock-in with five people. And yet on the other side, we reach more people than we ever have. So right. it was so interesting. It made me realize that, you know, we're never really preaching to a crowd if we're, if we're preaching from our true core. I mean, Whoa. we're preaching because we love what happens when God's word comes alive. It gave me um, almost like a rededication to why I preach, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. That's so yeah. weird you say that, because I think simultaneously on the other coast, it's kind of happened to me. The opposite might be happening to me. I'm really considering, obviously, you know, hearing that our average audience is there for about 15 minutes, tr trying to rethink that. But um, 
I'm going to explore tonight. I, I'm going to try to shoot for 27 minutes and I'm just going to see how it feels and see if it helps people more. I don't know. Um, but it's so we're having like the exact they're having the same experience, but like opposite where I'm like, you know what? I feel like I can get right to my point. I don't because I get distracted with people in the room and I'm like, hey, buddy, what are you up to? How long you guys been dating? You know, like I turned into like, yeah, a, yeah, like a live yeah. show or something. So I, and I, so now you're more focused, right? Yeah. And I'm yeah. falling in love with it all over again. I'm the same. I'm like, wow, this is so incredible because you're just you're in your heart. And, I, you know, last sermon, we had three people in the room, I think. And so you're just like, I don't know The the time thing is interesting. Can I ask you a question? Do, do yeah. you have plans to continue to preach longer, shorter or just kind of feel it? And, and what because I'm going to try to go shorter tonight, just being honest. OK, OK. No, I'm making this up as I go. I have no idea. <laughs> I've never yeah. done this before. This is all new. This is so new, man. Yeah. But we're, I mean, I've never been more obstinate and prayerful and careful about, you know, obviously this pandemic. But at the same time, like, I just feel so much passion right now to get to get the message out. And I think we have an opportunity to to really to really add uh, uh, love and uh -oh. care it's and freezing up, and, Judah. And, and understanding to people's lives. For sure. I missed um, all the last part except people's lives. It froze up. Oh, shoot. I hate that. It is it me that's freezing or you? I think so. Somebody tell us in the comments. Is it me? Yeah. Okay. Or... Tiffany says, just preach Judah. Tiffany says, just preach Judah. <laughs> oh, South Africa awesome. is here, Judah. <laughs> Oh, we got somebody says to us, guys, don't preach to please others, but follow your spirit. That's what someone says in the comments. Whoa. I, and I feel like you don't do that very much. So it's good for you, Pastor Stephen, to probably hear that. <laughs> like, it's good like, advice. Turn it I receive you. it, my sister. Thank you for that Insta Instagram comment rebuke. It's always welcome. It's always welcome. Um, um, I hope I'm not. I hope I'm not freezing. Hey, David. No, it's better now. It's better. Oh, better it's better. Now. Okay, okay. okay. I was it might have just been my phone. I don't know. No, I think I, th I think it was mine. Hey, um, can you sing us some of the blessing? Because it's literally all that I hear about. I do, I do hold the phone here, and everyone's like, have you heard the blessing? And I'm going to be honest with you. I was in the bath trying to think last week through a sermon, and so I was like, oh, I got to listen to the blessing. So I turned it on, and then, like, a call came in or something. So I've only heard, like, the first minute. <laughs> Oh, you haven't heard the whole thing? I haven't heard the whole song because I'm me, not a good friend. Let me move to where my guitar is and I'll uh Mr. Bieber just said hello to Reverend Furtick. He just What's up? That. What's up, Justin? <laughs> um Hey yeah, I Justin, stay tuned. We're gonna do some music here. We're gonna sing to you. I was um <laughs> Yeah, so what happened? I haven't told you the story yet. We were writing with um me and Chris were writing with Carrie and Cody. And hang on, get my guitar. Yes, this is getting good. And uh, uh, so we were writing another song. And um, hang on, let me shut the door. Yeah, Holly, Holly's not trying to hear this. Neither is Chelsea. She gone. She left. At what point did she leave? Oh, she's been she gone. Oh, so the no, moment somewhere. Stephen Furtick joined? <laughs> yeah, no. I, she uh, loves you. I think, I think she feels your preaching is significantly clearer than mine. <laughs> look, here's, so this is, look, man, I don't have a, a great setup here. Does this look okay? Yeah, it looks fantastic. Ooh, multiple well, stars. You, yeah, this, this, this is great. You can't see here. So the, um. How's that? Is that better or worse? No, it's great. Actually, we love the lighting coming in in the windows. Yeah, this is perfect. So, uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you Wow. Just the ironic blessing out of number six. Let's Come on. Again. Lord bless you 
and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Wow. Bro, that is like fresh water. Amen. 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 And then there's a prophecy, you know? On you and a thousand generations, wow. your family, your children, and their children, and their children, may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children, may his presence go before you and behind you. man just the blessing of the lord and yeah hey can i ask you something yeah i think that song taps into something that i think is so underutilized and so easily overlooked it's the power of repetition it's the power of declaration you know he is for me he is for you he is for you and i've been i feel like preachers singers songwriters communicate like I just think like we're always trying to think up the latest and the greatest and the newest and the bright. It's like, I just think we need to kind of just keep saying it over our life. Like he loves me. I'm forgiven. I'm his. I'm safe. I'm with him. I'm going to spit, you know, like just Come the on, power man. of rehearsing, revisiting, remembering, recalling. It's that song just speaks to me, man. Wow. I'm so thankful, man. It was the weirdest song and and I, I say the word weird, that's really not meant to dishonor it, but it went from writing it on a Thursday and we released it the next week because it felt like something that people needed right now. In fact, we, we wrote it on a Thursday and took it to the church that Saturday, which we never do. And when we started singing it, we could just feel people receiving it at a different level, you know, just the idea, what do we pray right now? What do we go to? And the fact that, the blessing that God gave Aaron and Moses to put his name on his people in number six, you know, the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And then just the declaration, may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations, your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you, behind you, beside you, all around you, within you. He is with you in the morning and the evening and you're coming and you're going, and you're weeping and rejoicing. He is for you. You know, it's just something I want to say to people right now because I think it's what God wants to say to us. And so we're just trying to release that blessing over people right now in this yeah. season. It feels appropriate, you know? It feels, um, I somehow I feel connected and, you know, bear with me. I'm slightly existential and emotional, but like I feel connected to first century Christians. I feel that's where my brain and, and, and imagination goes. It's like, whoa, we're not the first to go through unprecedented, uh, fearful, difficult, challenging days, plagues, uh, uh, diseases, pestilence, wars, rumors of wars, persecutions, and all of these things. And it's like, wow, that, you know, his face shining upon us, the blessing of God, generation to generation. It's like, wow, we're, we're not isolated, man. 2020 is still connected to the rest of church history and Christians and um, we, we, we've been here before, you know, in a way, like we've been here before and 
and say. our predecessors and ancestors made it through and they saw a side of Jesus maybe they never saw before because of the challenges and and I uh you know it gets me excited it gets me emotional for sure yeah, you're such a gift to the body of Christ, man. And I can't believe you just got me to sing that. I would have never done that. I think yes. there are three people that could. I mean, that's that's really weird that I just picked up that acoustic guitar and sang that song to you on Instagram Live. You know, Pastor, you know, what, what Oprah taught me about interviewing people, like, you know, she, she actually, she never taught me. So. <laughs> hey, um, so what are you going to do for the rest of the day? You know what? It's been it's been a really good afternoon because good. I, I want I wanted to I wanted to say this um, at a later time, but it's it's kind of it's kind of cool to tell you. We um we prayed for five churches that were that were new, or that were in a really um, slippery spot with not being able to meet. And I've been I've been trying to talk to some of the pastors today that are in our you know in our relational network or, yeah. or, or people that we just really believe in what they're doing and have been reaching out to them to try to see what financial assistance we can give them. And we've been able to talk to a few pastors, one in Detroit, one in West Virginia, uh, one in Sacramento today. And our church is just trying to send out, uh, you know, a hundred thousand dollars today to help some churches get through this next month. So we've been spending the afternoon, like our outreach team is, is on a call right now. I'm going to go get on another one in a minute, but I don't know. I just wanted to do something that, um, that was from faith, not fear, just to, yeah. to be able, because I have my own fears as a pastor. You know, we wonder how is this going to change church and yep. look different, but sometimes you just got to kind of take an opposite action to what you feel. So yeah, we've been just been trying to reach out today and I've been, before I came on with you, I was... I was studying. I'm going through the, the passage about Lazarus, and I'm writing down That's all these perfect. phrases. Look at this. In, in John 12, uh, 1, it says, in Bethany, where Lazarus lived. Whoa. And you write it down. He lived. But that's chapter 12. But in chapter 11, he's dead. So how do we get to... <laughs> How do we get to where Lazarus lived in chapter 11? It must be resurrection. So I was... I was freaking out about that a few minutes ago. Resurrection changes it. We got to talk more about resurrection, not just on Easter, Pastor. But Judah, you're missing it. Where Lazarus lived in Bethany, where Lazarus lived. Wait a minute. That's the guy. That's the. He, we just had his funeral in Bethany, where Lazarus lived. It's the whole message, where Lazarus lived. And it wouldn't have been anything in chapter 10, but in nope. chapter 12? You're it's like, just beautiful, man. <laughs> Like that means whatever you're going through right now, it's it's not the end of it. That means this is not the end. If death is not the end, this is not the end. Come on. It's not the end for your business. It's not the end for your marriage. It's not the end for your kids. It's not the end for your dream. It's not the end. Where Lazarus lived. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I'm not hey. playing. I love I love it. I love it. That really got me, man. I, I don't break out the index cards much to write stuff down, but I had to put that on its own index card, where Lazarus lived. <laughs> you know? Wow. That's that, that's that part of that passage, you know, where we've all talked about this a million times, but it still gets me to this day where Jesus cries, and then the next verse, he, like, brings him back to life. So you're like, Jesus, your tears are confusing, like, if I knew in the next verse I was going to raise my friend back to life, I definitely wouldn't cry about it. But it's yeah. like Jesus is so with us in the moment that the pain we feel in that verse is still relevant, even though it's going to be all fixed in the next verse. Like I just that boggles my mind about this eternal God who's able to sit with us in one verse and cry with us and then fix it all in the next. I'm like, what kind of value system does God have that I am not? totally aware of i agree Whew. it's the most confusing paradox just to see him cry over something he's about to fix right and it's like he wants to show us that his empathy is just as important as his authority Woo! that's what that's one of the things you're best at is like doing that empathy authority like the juxtaposition <laughs> of those two and landing them for people i'm like can you believe Jesus is crying? I want to cry with people too. And you're like, that's empathy. That's authority. That's how he works. I'm like, oh, that's right. <laughs> it's 
It's so good. It's so wow. I love being brothers and I love learning from each other. And, and can I just say something? And I promise you I'm going to let you go because I feel guilty now with the whole fam and Holly. And I want Holly to like love me and like see me as a friend. You know? She loves you. And My whole but, family loves you. We all love you. <laughs> but I, I want to say this and I want to be really bold in saying this. And this may, may feel awkward for you, but I've known you now for, you know, I'm bad with timelines. It might be 10 years, might be more mm -hmm. than that now. But to see a man who, and I really, really mean what I'm about to say, uh, overstaters and exaggerators like me have to, that, that needs to be said when we say stuff, dramatic. We have to like justify, clarify. Um, so what I'm about to say is meaningful, but you have become more humble as your platform has grown. You've become more dependent, more broken, more gracious, more kind, more empathetic, more understanding. The other day we were on a phone call and you're like, yeah, I don't see it like that anymore. I've changed. And like to hear a man who's had such apparent success in his field to be like, mm, I'm changing and, and I'm growing. And I just, uh, it just means a lot to me. You're not stagnant. You're not stuck. You don't see the Bible one way. You're constantly asking the spirit of Jesus to show you things. And I love that about you. I admire it. You motivate me to continue to be uh, a real one and to be authentic and genuine. And, and I know those are cliches and platitudes now and we use them all the time, but from the bottom of my heart, thank you as your friend. I, I respect you and I love you. And I continue to learn a lot, a lot from you. Thank you, man. I receive it. That means a lot. You know how much I admire you. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, can we do this again? Yeah. I want, how long are you going to keep this Instagram Live Apostolic Ministry going at this level? Uh, people have asked. I'm not sure. We know D Nice, the DJ, did like he did like one nine hour stint, and then he's told everyone he's never doing it again. So I think I think I think DJs might be onto something. If we keep doing this forever, it might be a little heavy handed, a little much. But I think. You know, I got some more friends like yourself that I want to talk to and just let people kind of see who they are. And, and I think as there's still some friends I want to talk to, we'll probably keep doing it. And then we'll just, I, I'm enjoying it. And I like, I'm learning, you know, just talking to you face to face. So we're going to keep it going for a while if that's all right. I love it. I want to come back because we owe a, a Psalm 61 sermon. We never got oh, to it. That's right. So okay. That, we will do that next. That's our next. We're making a commitment. Yeah, I'll be and here. If, I'll be here. If another passage <laughs> speaks to you, we can do that as well. I like the idea of you not telling me what it is and we just go. That sounds fun. Okay, deal. We'll do it. And we'll go back and forth at least two times and we'll just, we'll write a sermon and then we'll, uh, we'll podcast it. <laughs> I love you, Apostle. Preach great tonight. Okay, thank you. I love Text you so me when much. it's over. Is it streaming live? Yeah, streaming live. We'll go eight to about, about nine, but I'm going to shoot for 27 minutes. Who knows eight, if I'll do it? Eight o'clock, which time zone? West Coast. Oh, so 11, 11 my time. 11. I'm going to catch it on the archive. Yeah, I hear you. Church I respect home. that, actually. I respect that. Yeah. Well, text me after it's over. Okay, I promise. I love you, Apostle. All right. I love you. All right. Oh, the one and only Pastor Stephen Furtick. Uh, says likes your teeth, Judith. <laughs> that mom said, my kids say they like your teeth, Judith. That's my favorite. Judith. Um, Pastor Stephen Furtick, what an incredible man. When I saw him as one of the viewers, I must admit I was pretty excited. It's been, it's been a while trying to locate um, Reverend Furtick, but man, was it worth it. Was it worth it? Um, oh, man, sorry, guys. I got a little lost there. Uh, my phone, that was great. Thanks, Bray. Thanks, Sierra. I love you guys so much. Okay, I've got to jump in a meeting. We don't tell anybody it was a noon meeting. I'm uh, going to jump in with our noon meeting, and then I'm sure I'll be back. Uh, by the way, if you haven't heard, Rich Wilkerson Jr. goes live every day. I think it's 9 East Coast, 6 p.m. West Coast time, best coast time. And then Chad Beach is always going live, I think, at like 9 p.m. West Coast, which is like midnight East Coast. He's got the late night show. Amazing. I love you guys. Uh, thanks again to Pastor Stephen Furtick for joining me. That was so much fun. Learn so much. And next time we get on, we'll go, uh, we'll do the sermon. We'll do the sermon. Psalm 61, or maybe I'll surprise him with a different passage. Okay, more with Furtick. We'll do it. We'll do it. All right. Love you guys. Talk soon. Going through changes.